So you took it upon yourself to violate a court order rather than file a motion. This is an allegation regarding uh, issues pertaining to summer parenting time. Back up from the front of the court on this issue, please. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the front of the court had received a denied parenting time complaint from Mr. Krishner dated June 10th, um, stating that he had been denied his summer 2024 summer parenting time. Uh, there was an order that was entered on March 27th. Uh, 2023, uh, outlining the summer parenting time schedule. Um, my understanding from Mr. Krishner's complaint, uh, as well as the communication he's had with our office, is the parties had communicated uh, regarding the start of the summer break, um, and that on Monday, June 9th, uh, he went to go pick up the children, um, and that she was not there. Um, that he still has not, as far as I understand, he still has not seen the children, but I could be wrong on that. So I'll defer to the parties, but um, I believe there is at least a week's worth of night parenting time on the table for today, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Christopher, can you explain to the court why you feel that you've been denied parenting time? I have no idea. She has given no reasoning. Um, we discussed um, changing from the school parenting time to the summer parenting time on that post, trying to get a start date to go from the Wednesdays during the school year to back to the Sundays for the summer. And we never did come up with anything, and I have not seen the children in a month. Do you have any of the children now? No. I have not had them since May 28th. So you were supposed to have the children on June 9th, right? We had discussed two different dates. Um, okay. We had discussed <clears throat> June 2nd because at the beginning of the school year, Ms. Richardson gained three days because of the Sunday to Wednesday. So that's why I had suggested June 2nd, then I would have gained that back. So we would have been even. She didn't agree to that. Um, the only other thing she said was it would, it would be June 9th. Um, June 9th came and went. I went to the halfway point and she was not there. So if you just follow the black letter rule of the original judgment order in this case, is it supposed to be June 9th? Or June 2nd? We, that it was supposed to be, the way we've been doing it is one parent gains at the beginning of the school year, and then the other parent, when it switched back at the end, gains that back, so it's even. So to do that, it would have been June 2nd. But she didn't agree to that, and she said that, she said in a text on that post that 6-9 would be best. I need to hear from the Supreme Court on this one more time. Your, Your Honor, because of the geographical locations of the party's residence, they have a school year schedule that runs Wednesday to Wednesday on a weekly -week basis. However, during the summer months, their schedule is Sunday to Sunday. So they do transition from a Wednesday exchange to a Sunday exchange. Once the school year concludes and school resumes, they transition back to Wednesday to Wednesday. So my understanding is that the minor children's last day of school would have been March 31st, March. which means that June, Sunday, June 2nd. June May 31st. I'm sorry, May 31st. Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, Sunday, June 2nd would have been the first Sunday of summer break. According to the original. According to the way the order is written in the front of the court policy. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Now I get it. Before I go to, uh, to hear the other side, Mr. Garson, do you have any questions of Mr. Krishner? I. Uh, Mr. Krishner, do you have the Soberlink installed at this point? No, it is not installed. We're waiting for the concerned party to fill out the consent form. All right. That's the only question I had, Judge. Okay. Thank you. All right. Ms. Richardson, can you explain to the court why you are allegedly not following your honor can i just add to the, the comment from from counsel um with the complaint that was uh, submitted in front of the court office uh mr christian did provide information on the silver link 
um, showing basically the, the correspondence back and forth. And the last uh, log in there was that the acknowledgement form or paperwork that would need to be signed was last sent to Ms. Richardson um, and was not signed. So at the time of his complaint, he had provided proof that that was being done from the last hearing, but it hasn't been signed by Mr. Richardson from Silverlink to get that started. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Richardson, according to the front of the court, the children should have been returned to father June 2nd. The summer break parents time break. started June 2nd. That does not mean that Mr. Krishna would have had the children because they transitioned it would depend on where the children were at as of May 31st. And now if the parties can clarify that. Okay, where were the children on May 31st? They were with me. Schultz. And you had, and Ms. Richardson had received them the Wednesday prior, the 30th? I received them on the 20, or I'm sorry, 29th. Oh, excuse me. So they would have stayed with her and June 9th would have been Mr. Krishner's first period of time. Okay, so now we have to so we're going from June 9th. Ms. Richardson, can you explain to the court why you feel you're not in violation of the court order? Yes, so on May 17th, we were here and we had discussed the issues with what we thought was drinking um, on his parenting time and we had concerns. At that time, it was ordered he was not to be drinking on his parenting time and Soberlink was ordered as well. That was, from my understanding, supposed to be in place before he got the children back on the 22nd of May. Um, he got them back on the 22nd and neither one of those things happened. Soberlink was not set up. And when I got the kids back the next week, so the 29th, I had taken them to an appointment and CPS was called because the children had further complaints that drinking had occurred again and driving. So you took it upon yourself to violate a court order rather than file a motion? I felt like I had to protect them because at this point, He's not following what we had to do. According to the front of the court, they say, and Mr. Krishner states as well, the documentation was provided for you to sign, but you never did. How do you respond to that? Actually, I did get something from Soberling saying that they had been trying to contact me, um, but it was via an address that I've never had, ever. Um, and there's been no communication to my attorney from them or to me on APCO saying, hey, we're trying to get a hold of you. I could have signed anything, anytime but that has never been my address. So at some point, something had to have been changed because they changed it to my proper email address. Yesterday, I got it at 1.22 p.m., which I brought it with me. I opened it to sign it, sign it and it says it's expired. And I can no longer sign it. And according to my attorney, this was nothing that I needed to sign in order for him to use it. This was something that I had to sign in order to view the results. Mr. Karski, do you have any questions of your client? And it, you said there was some allegations of, of further drinking. Um, was it more than just drinking? Was there an attempt to hide his drinking? Yes. And can you tell us a little bit about that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is based on hearsay from the children? Is this uh, from the children? Well, it, it would be hearsay well, just for asking for the non-hearsay purpose of why she did what she did. I'm not allowing it. Okay. I'm not allowing it. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going right. I'm, I'm going to make my decision right now. Yeah, Your Honor. One more piece for the record. Um, this is an email that was provided to our office from Soberlink that was addressed to Mr. Krishner stating, please use this email as confirmation that you called to activate your device on Friday, June 7th, 2024. However, you cannot activate your device until the monitoring agreement has been signed by Jackie Richardson, the listed concerned party. A copy of the audit report for the level one monitoring agreement has been attached for your records. And it shows all the documents that were sent, Soberlink agreements sent to Mr. Uh, Krishner um, to Ms. Richardson. And the last one on here was an email viewed by JLYN underscore H at yahoo.com on June 7th, 2024 at 6.11 p.m. And that's the last that was attached to this email as far as documentation of Silverlink. So it was viewed on June 7th. Yes, yes it was viewed on June 7th. And from this email from Silverlink, it states he 
he cannot activate his device until she signs the agreement. So this is a chance to change right over here. Soberlink. Oh, Soberlink, that's right. Okay. Your Honor, can I add something? Why not? Everyone else is. Okay. Can we confirm Ms. Richardson's correct email address so we know that this is going to the right? Can we ever confirm her email address? It's now confirmed. The problem is that it was sent prior to an email address that I've never had. So the one that they're referring to on June 7th, I did receive from Soberlink stating, we've been trying to get a hold of you at an email address that they listed that I've never had. Which when I did speak to Soberlink, they did say that email address and that was never put on anywhere in the application. We don't know where that came from. So on June 7th, when I, or June 6th, when I spoke to them, I said that is not the proper email address and we changed it to the Jalen underscore h at yahoo.com. I also spoke with Soberlink yesterday to confirm if she had signed it or received it. And um, they said she still has not um, signed it. And if I may approach her, I have some evidence. We're in a Zoom hearing with, with Mr. Garski. I'm not, I'm not going to admit it. Basically, I'm, 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 I'm cutting to the chase. I'm making my decision right now. The children are returned to you to start, uh, and you are entitled to a week's parenting time at a minimum. The children should have been returned on, on June 9th. They were not returned on June 9th. Sunday to Sunday parenting time order continues. I am going to order as well that the silver link issue be resolved today, which means that any releases or anything else with silver link needs to be accomplished today by both parties so that we have safety for the children in the event this is an issue. Uh, I don't know if it's an issue at this point, but silver link needs to be fitted and done today. The children are returned today. Seven days of makeup time are ordered. And at this point, I'm not ordering any other sanction other than we need to be able to communicate, folks. And, you know, I'm, I'm hearing further allegations, further allegations, but if we had a CPS worker here, that might be a different story. We don't have a CPS worker here. So that's my ruling. When, what time can the children be returned? 6 p.m. Available 6 p.m.? Yes. I have to remind you, though, Mr. Krishner, if it is an issue, I don't know if it is, but there has been no alcohol consumption eight hours prior or during the, the uh, during your time with the children. And frankly speaking, if it is discovered that there's an issue relative to alcohol, it can be proven in the, in the court, so you can be held in contempt. Much less, I mean, one thing to lose your parenting time, but the other part of this is, is if there is an issue, it needs to be addressed because I don't want these children in harm's way. You understand me? Yes, sir. And there's absolutely not an issue. Hope so. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Garski, thank you, sir.